Hello! I have a dentist appointment today, so I came home from dropping Brogan off at daycare. I took a shower and put self-tanner on. In my hour of free time, I decided I wanted to quickly make a video about something I've had requested a few times. I want to talk to you guys today about what you should and shouldn't bring to the hospital with you when you come in to have your baby. Now, this is a really personal choice on what you want to pack in your hospital bag, and this is just a suggestion. These are just things that I kind of encountered when I had my son, or or I have encountered with patients where I see them using these things a lot or not using these things at all. As a labor and delivery nurse, this is what I would recommend you bring and what you don't bring to the hospital. So we'll start off with everything I think you should bring to the hospital. Whether you're getting induced or you come in in labor, hopefully you've had a little bit of time to pack a bag. The first thing that's really important, especially if you aren't married and father of baby is going to be present at delivery, is your photo ID and your partner's photo ID. If you and your partner aren't married, you'll be filling out a paternity affidavit, which puts your partner's name on the birth certificate and makes him legally responsible for the financial well-being of this child. You cannot do this without a valid photo ID that is not expired. It can't be a paper ID. It can be a passport, a driver's license, something like that. We've had that a lot where someone brings in an expired license and we can't put them on the birth certificate with that. This is really important to note that a paternity affidavit does not give you legal rights to this child. If you and your partner were to split up, you would still need to do a genetic test or a paternity test to prove that you are the father of this child, at least in the state of Indiana where I live right now. That is the rule and no one ever told me that when I had my son because me and my fiance are not married. He signed the paternity affidavit and we kind of both were under the impression that that gave him legal right to this child, but all it does is give you financial obligation to the child. Most hospitals do not offer in-house paternity testing. This is something you have to do outside of of the hospital setting, something to look into if you're not married and you're having a baby. The next thing I recommend to everybody is to make a birth plan. Now, don't make a birth plan and then come in and tape it on the wall and say, this is exactly what's going to happen because it probably won't go that way. But having an idea of what your feelings are on everything that comes to labor and delivery is a really good idea. I think the biggest thing about a birth plan that I like is it gives you questions that you may not have thought about before. It'll talk about meds that the baby's going to have after delivery. It'll talk about your preferences for pain medication. It kind of lets you walk through the process of a labor and delivery and all of the things that your nurse or doctor might ask you during that time. I think if you've had time to think about it before you come in, it allows you to make a more informed and just a better choice because you sort of know what you want coming in. I had one just on my phone and kind of read through it on the way to the hospital. My birth didn't go the way I had planned, but a lot of the things that I had decided upon prior to coming in still helped me because I was able to make that informed decision when it came up. Another thing you should absolutely bring with you is a long phone charger or a phone charger with like a small extension cord. We have outlets at my hospital in really weird places. There are none near the couch where the dad sleeps. They'll have to like plug their phone in by the door to the room and then not have access to their phone the whole time or just choose to not charge their phone which I think is a bad idea. You're gonna wanna take lots of pictures. So bringing in a long phone charger or a small extension cord with a phone charger for you guys to use is a really good idea. These are in no particular order, but if you feel like you want to dress your baby in the hospital, bring zippered pajamas that zip up from the bottom. I know that Target has these. I think I've seen them on Amazon before. Baby pajamas that zip up from the bottom allow you to change the baby without fully undressing him or her. That way they don't get really cold and screw scream their heads off. They might still scream either way, but you're going to have so many diaper changes while you're in the hospital. Those were what my son lived in when he was a newborn, and I highly recommend them to all new parents. You don't need to dress your baby in the hospital. We will keep them swaddled in blankets the whole time. It's just personal preference. Another thing you need to bring is a non-expired car seat. I didn't know car seats expired before I had my son. I didn't realize they had a weight range. So if you're being induced early for medical reasons or for reasons with the infant, you're going to want to make sure that your car seat goes down to four pounds because a lot of car seats don't. And we've had babies that are born under five pounds and we always check the car seat before we send them home. And we've had to tell parents, you can't use this brand new car seat you bought. It's not the right weight range for your baby. So they have to go out and buy another car seat to take this baby home in. Something I want to add on to this that is really important. When you come up to labor and delivery, 
bring the car seat, not the car seat base. I see a lot of people come up with the car seat still attached to the base and that is like a little bit of a nightmare for when you leave. You should already have that base installed in the back seat of your car and cinched in using the latch attachment. It's kind of difficult. Usually you have to watch YouTube videos to figure out how to do it. It shouldn't move more than an inch in any direction. So you really have to like put your knee into it and cinch it down. We can't install car seats legally as a nurse, at least in my hospital, when it's really late at night and we're doing a late discharge and we get down to the car and the base isn't installed. And then I'm trying to coach you how to do it and it's cold or rainy and the baby's crying in the car seat and the mom's in pain wanting to go home. It's just a really bad time. When you're coming into the hospital, if you can try to install at least the base. I wouldn't drive around with the actual car seat because if you were to be in an accident, you could just replace the base instead of the whole car seat. But when you're coming in to have your baby, of course, bring the car seat with you and just bring the actual bucket part that clicks into the base up to the hospital room. Something I see some really prepared parents do on postpartum is bring a sound machine or they have like a sound machine app on their phone or they go to Spotify and they play white noise. It really works because we have to come into the room so often during the night on postpartum and trust me, I try not to, but there's so many things that need to be done overnight and I'm sure the parents get so frustrated because a lot of times when I open the door, it wakes up the baby and they just calm the baby back to sleep. Some parents bring a sound machine that's like white noise that you would have in their nursery and it's enough noise that the baby doesn't wake up when I come in. It kind of drowns out the sound of the door opening. I have found that parents who do that tend to have their baby sleep a lot better. For the mom, something I would recommend you bring is loose, comfortable pajamas that allow you to breastfeed. Nothing that is difficult to get in and out of, really comfy bottoms. You can always wear the hospital robes the whole time that you're there, but I personally didn't like them and didn't want to do that. So I brought really comfortable like black pajamas that wouldn't get ruined with anything that got on them. And I felt like that was a really good idea. Going along with that, you're going to want to bring nursing bras that snap. I really like these off of Amazon. They're kind of like a sports bra, but they snap and they make it really easy for nursing. I personally just preferred to wear a bra all the time, but some people don't and that's totally fine too. And I really liked getting high-waisted underwear that were black. I feel like they were more supportive than the mesh hospital underwear that were too big. These just kind of gave me a little bit more support and they were black, so I wasn't worried about them getting ruined. I just went to Target and bought like the five for 20 deal and got them all kind of like a size big, wore them, and they were really, really great for that purpose. You're pretty much going to want everything to be black if you can. That way you don't ever have to worry about it getting stained. Another good thing to bring is any photo props you want for like newborn pictures you're going to take. I see some people buy these off of Etsy, like the wooden signs or the letter boards. That way you can put it in the crib with your baby and take the pictures kind of for your announcement, which is really cool. I always think these are the sweetest things and I did not do that with my son and I know for sure when I have another child in the future, I will bring one of these with me. The next thing on the list is snacks or drinks that you really like. I work night shift and the cafeteria for patients is closed. It's really hard when a mom has labored all night and it's three in the morning and she's starving and I physically can't give her anything other than saltine or graham crackers. We have juice, but juice and saltine crackers after being in labor for 25 hours is really not that great. I recommend people bring snacks from home. That way you can actually eat something after you have your baby, something you like to eat, and kind of look up what food delivery services are in the area. After I had my son, I had food delivered and that was the best. Usually the hospital can facilitate a way for either your partner to go down or them to bring the food up to the floor. That kind of goes along with drinks too. If there's something you really like to drink, I would bring it with you and then you can have it afterwards. Some people disagree with me on this, but I think you should bring your boppy or breastfeeding pillow. We do have pillows that we can kind of stack under your arms to assist when you're first breastfeeding and you need to get used to the positioning. And some people say don't bring the boppy or the breastfeeding pillow because it might just get dirty or it gets in the way, but we almost never have extra pillows. Like I don't even usually have enough pillows to give the partner a pillow on my unit. Not having extra pillows makes it really hard to position you when you're breastfeeding. And I usually have to take your pillow away and put it under your arm. So that's not 
not fun. I usually try to use blankets if I can and fold them up. Just bringing your boppy from home would probably be the best option for that. No one told me how swollen my feet were gonna get after delivery. I have really long feet, but they're really, really skinny, so I've never had this problem before. My feet were so big that literally none of my shoes or slippers fit me. I had to have Micah go home and get his size 14 slides that were, like they were too long, but they were actually wide enough to fit my feet in. I don't, I've never seen anything like it in a patient since me, so I don't know what my problem was, but I always warn people like bring slippers that are stretchy and that can fit really, really swollen feet in. You don't want anything restrictive because I had no shoes to wear to the NICU. I could barely get the hospital socks over my feet and they were really uncomfortable. I recommend going to like Target or maybe Walmart and getting some slippers like a size too big that have a non-slip bottom, like have a grippy bottom or have a sole so you can walk around if you prefer to wear shoes in the hospital. I personally did because I was walking to and from the NICU. Just something to like think about because usually you get so many fluids during labor and that all kind of settles in your feet. I've seen a few patients bring a small speaker, like a Bluetooth speaker, and they make a Spotify playlist. I think this is a really cool idea because you can play like different things during labor or you can play the white noise after you have your baby when you're all trying to sleep. I wouldn't play it so loud that like your neighbors next door are gonna hear you <laughs> when they're trying to sleep. I've really liked walking into a room and they have like white noise playing while the mom's in labor and it's really peaceful. I just think it kind of changes the whole environment of the room. So I think that's something I'll do when I have my next child. Baby nail clippers. We have no way to trim a baby's nails in the hospital. There are babies that are born with like a full set. They are like scratching their faces off and we don't have mittens and we don't have nail clippers. So I always try to tell people bring in your nail clippers or your baby nail files because it can be so bad. And we don't want to put mitts on the baby's hands because the baby having access to their hands helps with breastfeeding because they kind of can center themselves when they're trying to learn how to eat. So we want them to be able to touch and feel things, but then they're like scratching their little faces off. Bring like a set of nail clippers and a file. Usually the baby nail clippers that have a light on them are really good. We still use this pair once a week and my son is gonna be two in February. These are something I would recommend to every new mom. The light on the end of it is so ideal because you really can see what you're doing. Some hospitals give you a big plastic refillable cup with a lid and a straw when you're in labor. The hospital I delivered at did that, but the hospital I work at doesn't and we only have mid to small size styrofoam cups. When I was in labor, I drank so much ice water and afterwards when you're nursing, you get so thirsty. So bringing a refillable big like jug for water is so important. Have a lid on it, have a straw, whatever one you like to use at home that's like really, really big and can hold a lot that we can refill for you. You wanna be able to like fill it with ice and fill it with water and have it on your bedside table and not have to worry about getting a refill all the time. If you're one of those people that gets hot really easy and needs to have a fan all the time, bringing a little clip-on battery operated fan could be really good for you in labor. We have like one fan for the entire entire unit and I never know where it is. We get moms that get so hot during labor and I'll try to turn the AC on in their room and it's still just really hot and they're miserable. I think it would be really helpful to have a fan that we could clip onto the bedside table or clip onto the like arm of the bed and point at them while they're in labor so it can cool them down. I think that's something that I wish my unit would invest in because it would really help some moms not feel so hot and they're really inexpensive. So if you're one of those people that likes having constant airflow, definitely invest in a little clip-on fan. It can double as a stroller fan later on. Like when you clip on your stroller, when you go for a walk for your baby, really you'd get a lot of use out of it, I think. The last thing I would tell you to bring that I've heard at other hospitals they really care about is your pediatrician's information, like their contact information and their name. My hospital just has an in-house pediatrician see your baby after it's born and then they make an appointment for you to follow up with an in-house pediatrician then whatever you do after that is between you know you and your insurance at other hospitals I've heard from they really care about who your pediatrician is and they will ask you during labor and get upset if you don't know because that needs to be like determined beforehand I don't really know why because I would think you'd have in-house pediatricians well I guess if you're not a big hospital I don't know we have in-house pediatricians that see all the babies so we 
we don't ever contact an outside pediatrician to come in. That's just like not really a thing for us. But if your hospital does not have an in-house pediatrician to see the newborns, you should have your pediatrician's contact information ready. Okay, let's talk about what not to bring with you to the hospital when you're in labor. Number one, first thing that comes to mind is medications from home. We do not let you take your own medications once you're in the hospital. We have to get them through the pharmacy so that they can verify that they don't have interactions with each other or with any of the medications we're going to be giving you while you're in labor. We won't let you take anything from home. You could try calling ahead of time if you have something very important that you need to bring with you. The only thing I would say maybe is if you're like a really, really bad asthmatic and you're worried you'd have like an asthma attack before we could get you an inhaler, you could bring your inhaler from home, like your rescue inhaler, but we try to get you one like as soon as we can if you're known to need it. I just wouldn't want you to like need your rescue inhaler and not have it. So other than that, pretty much leave all of your medications at home because even with your rescue inhaler, we're gonna get you a new one while you're in the hospital, one from our pharmacy. So that's something to think about. Another thing I don't think you should bring from home, kind of controversial, pillows and blankets. Birth is very, 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 very messy. And I have seen blankets that literally just get thrown in the trash, like nice Sherpa blankets from home the dad will just walk over to the trash can and throw it away. They get so gross if you have them on you during labor because like when your water breaks and let's say there's meconium and then you're like bleeding and birth and everything and the blanket kind of just gets shoved to the side, you're not gonna have a washer and dryer with you and you're not gonna wanna bring that blanket home three days later. It's gonna get really gross. So I would recommend like maybe if you wanted to bring some to postpartum, but even then you're gonna get like blood and spit up and milk on it. Have your partner go get it. Well when you move over to postpartum. I don't know. I personally would just use what the hospital provides, like pillows and everything. Like that's fine. You can bring pillows from home, but again, just expect them to get disgusting. I have to like strip the bed and throw everything in the dirty linens like multiple times during labor because it gets so saturated. You're not going to be able to wash anything while you're there. So nothing that is like stainable, nothing that you're that attached to. If you're going to bring something, I would bring something you're comfortable just throwing right in the garbage. You don't need to bring diapers and wipes for your baby. Baby. We have tons of them here at the hospital. If you have like a very specific brand you want to use, I think that's fine. Like it's whatever you really want to do, but to save money, I would just use what the hospital has. This goes along with bottles and formula if you choose not to breastfeed. We have bottles and formula that we can give your baby if it's needed. You don't have to bring that from home. I've seen people bring formula from home when they have a very specific brand they want the baby to have, and that's fine, you can do that, but you might as well save your money and use the ready to feed formula we have because it's really expensive to buy out of the hospital. I would not bring outfits that snap for a baby unless the baby is going to be in the NICU. And even then they're probably not gonna let your baby wear clothes. My son was just in the NICU for observation. So he had a snap sleeper on and that way the wires could come out through the snaps. But otherwise snaps are so frustrating on a baby when you are changing them like hourly, you're gonna have to undo all of those snaps and redo all of those snaps. And it gets to be so frustrating. If I have a baby in like a sleeper and I have to get it completely naked to weigh it, it and like bathe it and stuff, I'm probably just gonna put it into a diaper and a hat and swaddle it after and fold up the outfit and put it underneath the crib because the babies get so mad when they're cold and I'm sitting there taking forever trying to get all the snaps done and I could just swaddle them in a warm blanket and not have to worry about that. Sleepers with snaps are the enemy. <laughs> I would highly recommend getting sleepers that zip up from the bottom and just leaving it at that if you feel the need to dress your baby when you're in the hospital. That kind of goes along with multi-piece outfits outfits, like the little outfits that have a onesie, pants, socks, mittens, a bib, a matching hat, like that is not meant for the hospital. We have to undress your baby so many times a day to do things, like completely undress them naked. It's never going to get put back together correctly. It's going to end up in a folded pile underneath your crib. It also might get lost too in the nursery. I've had moms upset because the going home outfit got lost, but it was postpartum day one and we had so many things we had to do with the baby. I dropped it off at the nursery and when I picked it up the outfit was just gone and we don't know where it went. We have a ton of donation outfits. Sometimes they get mixed in with that and it's really hard to keep track of it when we have like 
a hundred babies on postpartum. Keep your going home outfit kind of together until you're ready to go home, then you can put it on the baby. The only thing with the going home outfit is make sure that it's not puffy, it's not like a little bear outfit or anything. It needs to be one thin layer when you put a baby in a car seat. Anything that's like padded will make the car seat not able to cinch down. You should be able to turn your car seat upside down with, I mean, don't do this, but you should be able to turn your car seat upside down with the baby in it and not have the baby move at all. That's how like tight and snug the car seat strap should be on the baby. And I've showed parents who put like a bare snowsuit style outfit on their baby to go home in because it's winter. I'll put the baby in the car seat and cinch it up all the way, take the baby out, take the baby out of that outfit and put just the baby back in the car seat. And the straps are like a good three inches off the baby's chest. If you were in an accident, that baby's gonna move around so much because all of that clothing is gonna compress and you don't want that. So make sure your going home outfit is a very thin one layer thing. You can always put a blanket over them in the car seat. Put the clips on, cinch it down really like nice and snug, and then you can tuck a blanket around the baby, kind of like tuck them in to prevent them from getting cold if you live in an area that is cold. Don't bring clothing that doesn't give you access to feed the baby. Nothing tight, nothing like a really long dress that you're gonna have trouble breastfeeding in because you're gonna get really frustrated trying to pull up an entire dress every 30 minutes when the baby needs to eat. Try to find something that's kind of open at the top, like a robe that opens up or a shirt that's meant for nursing that can come down really easy. Anything that gives you access is so important. Like I said earlier, don't bring the base to your car seat up to the room. It makes it kind of hard when you're leaving and the nurse has to teach you how to install the car seat. Have that car seat base installed beforehand and just bring up the bucket part of the infant car seat. Don't bring your Xbox. I really can't believe I even have to say that, but I've seen that like 15 times in the year I've worked on labor and delivery where the dad will bring his Xbox and have a blanket over his head, his headphones on, and the mom is like screaming and crying in labor and he's just like running the volume up. No, don't bring your Xbox. We've had dads on postpartum like screaming in a video game and we run in there thinking there's like a domestic problem going on and he's screaming playing Call of Duty. Well, the mom is like trying to get one minute of sleep. Leave the Xbox at home. It's such a short amount of time that you're gonna be there. Just kind of enjoy the moment and be a supportive partner. Don't bring your Xbox with you. And that ties into my last thing that you should not bring to the hospital. Don't bring your children um, because if an emergency were to happen, we have no way to like watch your children. If you have to go back for a stat C-section and then you end up like going to the ICU or something really unexpected happens, what are we going to do with your children? Even if they're older, we don't have the resources to watch children when you're in labor. And it's really hard because we'll have moms that don't have a support system come in with their six-year-old, their 12-year-old, their 14-year-old. And they're like, oh, they'll be fine. But I've seen things go sideways really quick. And then, you know, what do we do with these kids? We, we don't have anywhere to put them. We don't have an adult to look after them. Staffing's really tight right now everywhere. The kids need to stay at home until you can get back home. I would try to make a plan from like when you're 20 weeks on, who is gonna watch your kids if you need to be admitted to the hospital? We had a patient recently that got admitted unexpectedly at 30 weeks. She came into triage and she ended up getting admitted and she was like hysterical because she has four other kids at home and no one to watch them. We were worried if we let her go home, she would not survive. So we needed to keep her in the hospital and she hadn't had time to make a plan for where her other kids were gonna go when she was in labor. But having that plan from like 20 weeks on of who's gonna watch your kids if something were to come up is really important. If someone shows up with their children to the hospital and doesn't have a support system for them, we will contact CPS and get them temporary emergency care where they will go into a foster home until you are discharged from the hospital like after you have your baby. It's not anything against you. It's it's not like they're getting taken away. We've had to do this because a mom has brought her two-year-old in and we just, you can't watch a two-year-old while you're in labor and we can't either. Just really thinking through what you wanna do with your kids beforehand is really important. Along with that, don't bring someone who's not gonna support you in labor. I can't tell you the amount of times I've had a woman in labor doing her best, going natural, and someone is like yelling at her and berating her, making her feel bad for her choices, belittling her. It is so hard to watch. Patients will say, oh, I brought my mom because you know, I thought I should, but then the mom the whole time is questioning her choices, making her cry, being really rude to the medical staff. And it's like, why are you here? Why not 
have someone who's gonna be supportive of you or just nobody. Like, <laughs> we will support you. We will be in the room helping you. It's so hard to watch those situations. And then they're fighting on postpartum and someone gets kicked out and it's really just stressful. I don't want that for somebody. Bring people who are gonna support you, who are gonna respect your decisions, who are gonna coach you through pushing and be right there with you. That also ties into don't bring someone that you don't feel comfortable talking about your medical care in front of. It's really hard when a patient tells us, don't talk about this, 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 or this in front of my partner. And we will absolutely honor that. I can't guarantee that the next shift doctor won't come in and accidentally say something. It's really, really hard to make sure that that doesn't happen. And we do our absolute best there are times when it's an emergency and we have to talk about your medical care in the room. Like we have to talk about your comorbidities or if the NICU comes in urgently, I have to be able to tell them mom has this, mom has that because it's very, very relevant to the baby's care. And it's hard to like whisper during an emergency. That's just really stressful for everybody. So if you don't feel comfortable talking about something with your medical care or like you don't have, your parents don't know something about you, I wouldn't probably have them there just because there's no guarantee that somebody won't accidentally say something. That's what you shouldn't bring with you to the hospital. I hope this video has been helpful. I think that I should have watched more videos like this when I was in labor because I brought a bunch of stuff I didn't need and didn't bring some things that I should have brought. All in all, you're only there for usually two to three days. You can make it through with just what the hospital has. These are some things I think that would be better for your experience if you did or didn't bring them. Let me know in the comments if there's any other videos you guys want me to make. This was a great suggestion and I feel like this video will be really helpful for people. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.